John Willis had it all. A luxurious lifestyle, a mansion on the beachfront, and a high-ranking position in the Chinatown gangs of Boston. But beneath the surface, he was a troubled soul, haunted by his past and driven by a desperate need for money. After years of extortion, prostitution, and gang violence, his greed and ambition eventually led him down a dark path, ending with a 20-year sentence in federal prison. This is the story of the notorious White Devil, the only white guy to rise to the top of Boston's Asian organized crime. Willis had a childhood of unspeakable tragedy. Born in 1971 in Dorchester, Boston, to an alcoholic father who worked for the Irish mob, Willis had to endure his father's sudden and unexpected abandonment. His pain manifested in violence, and after one horrible incident, Willis was sent to an alternative school. However, his suffering was far from over. His half-brother died of a cocaine-induced heart attack. Then his mother lost both her legs to diabetes and died suddenly of a heart blockage. At the tender age of just 14, John was suddenly thrust into a harsh world, alone and abandoned. He had to survive the next two years alone with nothing but his wits and courage. His struggle was epic. He did all he could to make ends meet, even when he could barely afford to keep the heat on in the cold winter months. John was a young man consumed by anger and rage until he found an outlet in weightlifting and, soon after, steroids. In two short years, he had transformed himself into an imposing figure, and at 16, he was hired as a bouncer at a local bar. On Sundays, the bar filled up with Asian gangsters, and John was spellbound. One night, things took an unexpected turn. A Korean man maced a Chinese man, and John sprang into action. He punched the attacker and rushed the Chinese man to the bathroom to flush the mace out of his eyes. It was then that John's remarkable story truly began. The man was grateful, introducing himself as Vapen Shot or John Cho for short. He handed John his card with a promise that he could call on him for any help he might need. Willis was now all alone. In a desperate moment, he called a number given to him by a Chinese gangster he had once saved. To his surprise, two BMWs pulled up shortly afterward, filled with stylish, young Asian men wearing Miami Vice suits and gelled hair. With nowhere else to turn, Willis took his chance and got in the car. When Willis stepped into the lavish mansion in South Boston, he was met with a shocking sight. A crew of Chinese gangsters covered in tattoos and packing guns, along with their girlfriends. John Joe, the mastermind behind the infamous gang Ping On, saw potential in Willis and took him under his wing. Ping Gon managed illegal gambling dens and massage parlors, providing protection for local merchants and using restaurants as fronts for loan shark enterprises. John Joe saw Willis's size as an invaluable asset to the gang, and when people owed them money, they came down with an iron fist. This was the dangerous, thrilling life Willis had been drawn into. John soon realized he had been unwittingly thrust into the dark and dangerous world of the Chinese underworld, the influential and notorious Pingong Gang. Loyalty to the gang was necessary, or the consequences would be ruthless. But John Zhou saw potential in the young orphan, and despite his size, he knew he could be of use. Don't go back to work, he told Willis. From now on, you stay out here. He handed him $500 and said, Get rid of those terrible clothes. My boys are taking you shopping. John was grateful for the transformation that had taken place in his life. He was thankful for the new crew of people who treated him like a brother, the warm house he had to sleep in, and the food always available. He was allowed to get custom-fitted suits, a pager, and a cell phone, and was taught how to style his hair to fit in with the other guys. This was an invaluable experience for John, an impressionable teenager. Indeed, this was a dream come true. He ventured into the underworld, a strange and unfamiliar place for a young white teenager. Everywhere he went, he was met with strange looks, as if his presence surprised the gangs and acquaintances of the Chinese Mafia. But he was there for a purpose, to learn the secrets of the underworld, to take back to his city and use them to his advantage. In the Chinese Mafia, he learned the culture, how to respect elders and Chinese and other languages. It helps them to communicate and fit into the Mafia easier. Willis and a crew of other recruits were assigned to rob rival gambling dens for two of the city's most notorious Chinese crime lords. 
His first attempt was disastrous, nearly ending in being shot the instant he stepped inside. After that, he was much more cautious and ruthless, completing several robberies and eventually carrying a machete with him in case he needed to sever the arm of whoever he was robbing if they had changed the briefcase to it. The Chinese Mafia generally refrained from dealing drugs due to the great police attention, so Willis started earning money by running drugs for some of his brothers and selling cocaine and marijuana. Nearly two years after arriving in New York, Willis had become a respected member of the Chinese Mafia. He was called back to Boston, where he worked as the Mafia boss's personal bodyguard and debt enforcer, Tan No, also known as Bike Ming. Willis followed Ming around town, ensuring his safety and dealing with anyone who crossed him. Over time, the two grew close, and Ming gave him the nickname Dragon Boy. Despite his position, Willis still found himself in hot water with the feds due to his anger since childhood and the steroids he had been using for years. Now he was the deputy leader of the Chinatown gangs, acting as the right-hand man to the leader. John Willis started acting recklessly and caught the attention of local law enforcement. He was eventually arrested and convicted of both extortion and dealing heroin. This did not, however, stop Willis from making questionable life choices. While in prison, Willis connected with a man in Florida who knew how to acquire a large amount of OxyContin, a legal form of heroin if prescribed. South Florida had lax regulations, which made it a popular hub for entrepreneurial gangsters and was nicknamed Oxy Alley. Seeing this as an opportunity to make something for himself, Willis decided to take advantage of the opportunity. He may look young, but his heavily muscled arms give away his age. Inscribed on his left arm are Chinese characters signifying strength and righteousness, a testament to his adopted cultural identity. When he emerged from jail with a few connections he had made, Willis had the remarkable ability to make money and was determined to use it. His connection in Florida gave him endless Oxycontin tabs for just $9 a piece. He would buy up multivitamin containers from a local drugstore, fill them with Oxy, and seamlessly seal them back up again. Then Willis would transport the Oxy back up to Boston, where he would sell the tabs for a whopping $15 a piece, netting him a tidy profit of $6 per unit. Before long, Willis was raking in the dough and living lavishly. He even recruited a few boys from Boston to help him, but kept his life in the Chinese Mafia separate from the effort, knowing they would disapprove. He was soaring on the high of success, purchasing a Porsche, Hummer, Bentley, mansions in Florida, and even his very own nightclub. His success was unparalleled and the envy of many. Willis was living the American dream, but it was quickly shattered when the FBI swooped in and arrested him. Tearing him away from his beloved wife, Willis now faces the prospect of a lengthy prison sentence, with only the promise of a release in 2028. But his wife remains steadfast in her love for him, despite his misdeeds, and dreams of one day living a simpler life with her white devil. John Willis's story is truly remarkable. He rose from poverty and tragedy to become the white Chinese mafia boss, an influential figure in the Boston underworld. Despite his success, his ambition and greed eventually led to his downfall, resulting in a 20-year prison sentence. Despite his hardships, his wife remains by his side, offering her love and support. John Willis' story is a cautionary tale of what happens when ambition and greed override morality and serves as a reminder that crime does not pay. Thank you for watching.